In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Chubby Checker did the twist. Elvis said, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. The Beatles just wanted to hold your hand. Crosby, Stills, and Nash had a thing for Judy Blue Eyes. Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons said, Big girls don't cry. James Brown is Mr. Please, please, please. Michael Jackson will forever be the thriller. Taylor Swift is fearless. Keith Urban, but for the grace of God, is a lucky man. And our own Frank is a wonderful man in the moonlight. Mr. Wonderful. That's right, the Labor Day weekend is upon us and it's time to rest from our labors. Perhaps it's time to party and to join in doing a little dance. Jesus and the disciples in our gospel today are dancing the Basileia to Theou, the central message of Jesus Christ, who has come among us is the arrival of God's kingdom on earth, the Basileia kingdom, to Theou of God, and it's euangelion, good news, real good news. In fact, that's the reason I am here today. I gave up coming to church for bad news a long damn time ago. It's the euangelion of the Basileia to Theou I'm looking for. I'm here to join with Jesus in dancing the good news of God's kingdom. Listen, now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. The word gospel, good news, Evangelion occurs 101 times in the New Testament. And in the Gospels, almost all occasions are when Jesus is reaching out to the poor, the disenfranchised, the sick, the lame, the sinners like you and me. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. You see, God's purpose in the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ is to proclaim and inaugurate the kingdom of good news, the kingdom of divine love. Time and time again, Jesus tells us his mission is to inaugurate this kingdom of God on earth, the kingdom of love. His parables teach about the kingdom. He even tells his disciples to pray to God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Nowhere in the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John does the good news have anything to do with who's the real Catholic, or who's doing the real liturgy, or who's got the real truth. It's never about what we think we know. And Jesus went about Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner 
of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. It's the euangelion, the gospel of the Basileia to Theu, the kingdom of God. In our baptismal covenant in the Book of Common Prayer, at every baptism, we, the baptized, are asked, will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Jesus Christ? The gospel appointed for today says from that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering, be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and he said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, for you are a stumbling block to me for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any man would come after me, let him deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Yes, Peter is the rock. He sinks like a rock on the Sea of Galilee because of his lack of faith. He's hard-headed as a rock, denying Jesus three times. And he becomes a stumbling rock, a stumbling block, and is even called Satan. Jesus, on the other hand, is doing the Basileia to Theu. His ministry is to proclaim good news and inaugurate this kingdom of God on earth which is the kingdom of love. Peter and the disciples will try to do the old judgmental soft shoe as opposed to the Basileia to Theu. But Jesus will preach and teach and teach again that to follow him you must be about the kingdom of God which is good news, real good news. Lord of all power and might, the author of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Now what keeps us from the good news of the kingdom of God, the Basileia to Theu. First and foremost, I think it's our judgment, our judgment of ourselves and others. If there's one exercise every Christian should do every morning, it is to stand completely naked in front of a big bathroom mirror and to repeat from memory in the King James Version, the Matthew text, Judge not that ye be not judged. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye and other places, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye and other places? Now, if you're text savvy, you can even take a selfie of yourself in the buff with your iPhone and you can save it under judge not. P.S. If you need spiritual counsel, email the rector, but please do not email the selfie. <laughs> the second behavior that keeps us from sharing the good news is our illusion of how special we think we are and what we think we know, which is a version of the incident in the Gospels where the sons of thunder all possessed with themselves James and John come to Jesus wanting to be special to sit at his right hand and his left when he comes into his glory Jesus responds by saying whoever would be great among you must be a servant and whoever would be first among you 
must be last and a slave. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. St. Paul gets it. In the epistle for today, he says, By the mercy of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Christianity is about sacrifice. Being a disciple following Christ is about sacrifice. It's about denying yourself, taking up your cross, losing your life to find it. It's about dancing the Basileia to Theu, which is the dance of good news of God in Jesus Christ. I danced in the morning when the world began. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I came down from heaven and I danced on earth at Bethlehem. I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I lead you all in the dance, said he. We are indeed blessed on this Lord's day and every Lord's day. At Holy Communion to come forth to the altar to receive the good news of God's sacrifice for my life and your life and for the life of the world. The very last words, however, of our glorious liturgy and Mass are, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. That's right. Go forth as the living sacrifice. Go forth with good news to a world that badly needs good news. Go forth to dance the Basileia to Theu. Take Jesus into the world. Give him a ride in the taxi cab of your own life. Here's a true story. Once upon a time, there was a priest who left a parish to accept a call in a warmer climate. You may be able to guess who that was. For a long time, the parish had been organized with ministry committees chaired by members of the vestry. It worked very well if the vestry person was interested or committed to the ministry of the committee he or she chaired, and of course, if they had committed people to work with them. This particular committee, the visitation committee for shut-ins, however, was not working. The chairperson loved serving the solemn mass on Sunday morning as thoroughfare, but visiting in the local nursing home on Sunday afternoon, not so much. One Sunday, however, one of the youth groups asked him to help transport the senior youth group to the nursing home for visitation. Not really wanting to go and certainly not wanting to miss a Packers game on television, the vestryman grudgingly agreed. While the youth group was leading evening prayer at the end of their visit, the vestry person stood in the back of the cafeteria. But lo and behold, out of nowhere, an old man in a wheelchair came up and grabbed his hand. Reluctantly, he took hold of the old man's hand and held it during the service. For the next two weeks, the same thing happened. He would stand during evening prayer at the end of the visitation, the back of the cafeteria, and the old man in the wheelchair would come up put out his hand and hold the hand of the vestry person standing during evening prayer. On the last Sunday that the youth group was scheduled to visit that month, the vestry man looked for the old man in the wheelchair, but he was not there. The vestry person inquired at the reception desk, and he was told by a nurse that the old man was almost unconscious. He had had a stroke during the week. He had no family, so if the vestry man wanted to go and see him, the nurse said it would be okay. So the vestry man went down to the room. He entered the room, took the hand of the man, and prayed that God would bless him. 
as soon as he finished the prayer, it felt as if the old man was lightly squeezing his hand. Feeling like he was going to cry, the vestryman stumbled out of the room, and as he did so, he bumped into a nursing assistant. She said, he's been waiting for you. He whispered several days ago that he did not want to die until he had the chance to hold the hand of Jesus one more time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.